They have psychiatric problems, they have mental health problems. And now we know that those problems are more important than seizures. I am excited to introduce to you today epileptologist Angel Eledes Rano. Angel shall today be speaking about, in part one of two, his recent review and opinion on a former paper regarding the anti seizure medication Levetiracetam slash Kepra. Hankel speaks about its effectiveness in controlling seizures, but also the importance of precision medicine versus automatically doping people up with a drug that is considered to be a good tool for controlling seizures in general. Thanks for having me. So I am an epileptologist and neurologist working in Madrid. Uh, I am seeing both children and adults. I think that's kind of uh, not very frequent. I don't do the transition from children to adults, I am the transition. Uh, and I, we are starting a new project in, in Madrid that, uh, that's very exciting. What's the new project you're starting? So I had the opportunity to start a, a new institution uh, and be the director of a new epilepsy program. It's the Madrid Epilepsy Center, it's the name of the, of the new project. And it's exciting to have this opportunity because we can put our philosophy and our ideas uh, trying to um, make the patient the center of the, of the care. And all the, you know, epilepsy is involving so many things uh, and so many perspectives and so many professionals. So we are trying to organize something with the uh, patient with epilepsy in the center of the care. So that they have access not solely to an epileptologist, but also to, say, um, a neuropsychiatrist, a dietitian, a physical therapist and things like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, speech therapy, uh, mental health uh, therapy, all the uh, workup like a neurogeneticist, uh, video EEG, MRI, uh, so everything, social worker, so we are trying to, to make all this and not to, to make uh, the patient go to every specialist, but, they, but every specialist go to the patient, so the other way around. Well, watch out, I think you might have a few people wanting to move to your location in Madrid, because <laughs> it sounds amazing what you're doing. Yes, yeah, so this is something we are starting. Of course, uh, epilepsy and in the rare epilepsies or the complex epilepsies area, uh, sometimes you get patients from all over the world. So I, I also do online consultations to, to try to reach uh, these patients as well. Well, one of the benefits of the internet, uh, I think especially you know, although, of course, COVID was horrific and lots of people hated, understandably, lockdown, I do think that it made it made more clinicians like yourself use the internet to give people treatment online. Absolutely. And of course, you are losing something if you are not seeing the person in person. But at the same time, you have, yeah, this huge opportunities to, to go to a specific specialist uh, in your uh, gene or in your specific uh, epilepsy or in your spe uh, specific epilepsy issue, like the mental health problems related to epilepsy and so on. And and just so everybody knows as well, uh, Ankel and I, well, I said, did we meet on Twitter or was it at an event? I can't remember. I think so. The first the first connection was in Twitter or yeah. yeah. Anyway, so we both were working with EpiCare and ended up um, seeing each other at conferences. And so I've seen um, Angel do some amazing talks, um, one of which you did um, at the SCN 8A and SCN 2A conference um, over the weekend um, in uh, Denmark. And it, honestly, I know I sound like I'm promoting him, but he was so good. So, and that will be available, um, on one of the websites. So make sure you check it out, everyone. Um, so Angel, today you're going to be talking about, um, Levetiracetam or otherwise known brand name Kepra. Uh, could you tell us for everybody who's not familiar, what is this drug? Yeah, so this is the most commonly prescribed drug, anti medication. So, uh, you know, uh, researchers and clinicians, sometimes we are focusing a very, very narrow uh, target of research. So a molecule or a gene, and sometimes we are forgetting to research or to talk about the most common things, which are the, mo the most important in the end. 
So levetiracetam uh, is a drug who, uh, which was developed during the 90s. Uh, it was introduced in the market in 1999, so at the end of the decade. And uh, it was a huge revolution because it was a drug uh, which, which could be um, prescribed without interactions with other drugs. And uh, it's kind of safe uh, regarding to uh, cardiac problems, kidney problems, bone problems. And uh, at the same time, it's so easy to prescribe. So it's, it's, it was very, very different to other uh, old medications like uh, maybe Valproic or Phenytoin or Phenobarbital. So in that sense, it was a huge revolution. And because of that, uh, it became a blockbuster. Blockbuster, that's a good term for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's the favorite drug for all over uh, a specialist, like uh, intensive care unit, a specialist, uh, emergency department, uh, doctors, uh, internal medicine doctors, uh, because it's, it's really, really easy to use. So at the same time, uh, we had this dark side of, of, this, of the story that, of course, if you get this over prescription, so you use it too much, you are not doing it uh, well at the same time. So this is the the, I think this is the background where, where our study is starting. So tell me about this um, specific study then, um, which came out, I believe, in April. It's not an, ori an original uh, study, it's a review study and a narrative uh, review, which we call narrative review when you go over uh, all the references, so previous papers, previous research studies, and you try to do a summary uh, and also you give your opinion, your expert opinion. So a group of uh, epileptologists uh, together with my own institution, uh, my old epilepsy program, but also with Fabio Nascimento, he's an epileptologist working in the US. And uh, we tried to review all the evidence on Kepra, on, on levetiracetam, and try to uh, highlight where uh, not to use it and where better to use it. So to try to make it more specific. And by where you say when to use it and when not to use it, you're talking about in a particular situation of a person with epilepsy, yeah. right? So what type of seizure they have, frequency, any other comorbidities, um, drugs they're taking, right? Things like that? Yeah, yeah. To be more precise. So it's not Kepra for everybody. So in the last few years, we have this feeling that epilepsy is that is, is that a subspecialization of neurology where you put Kepra and then you start to think. So it's, uh, you just put Kepra. <laughs> so we want to end uh, this kind of uh, strategy and to be more precise to help better our patients. So for example, over the last few years, we discovered that around 20 to 30 percent of people with, uh, treated with uh, levetiracetam, uh, by the way, Kepra is the commercial name, uh, but levetiracetam is the, the scientific name of the drug, uh, they have psychiatric problems, they have mental health problems. And now we know that those problems are more important than seizures. For many of us, yeah. A seizure is just one moment or some minutes and mental health problems are all the time with you. So if you, uh, what, what, I, what I can say to you, of course, you know about it <laughs> better than me. What's important though, I think, is that we have um, people with epilepsy and their potential carers, as well as um, clinicians working together, isn't it? A bit like at the conference, you know, but that we just had the Philadelphia conference. So none of us, know everything that's the important thing to mm. note yeah, yeah yeah for sure and you know we, we were like very very delighted to have a drug uh, which was so easy to use and which was uh, so safe for the heart and for the bones and for the bowels and so and so on and so forth but at the same time 
who cares about the bonds when you don't uh, get any happiness of your from your life thank you exactly and that didn't used to be recognized did it so like you were saying people would just <laughs> oh you've got uncontrolled epilepsy just try some kepra levetiracetam and good luck with that but it's not solely about seizures and i try to to use this comparison if you want to decide between your cholesterol because of course levetiracetam is very good for cholesterol because it, it has no interactions and other drugs like carbamazepine or even uh, eslicabazepine they have some effects on uh, lipids on cholesterol but who cares about cholesterol if you are going to get divorced because your your couple is not standing you so uh, you you have to balance that and of course this is only 20 or to 30 percent so uh, there is uh, 70 80 uh, percent who are not at risk of these psychiatric uh, adverse events but it's something you have to explain to the patient uh, don't explain so much that you are causing no servo because uh, you know what? I noticed this a lot on social media in some um, special groups for people with epilepsy. They'll somebody will be prescribed a new drug, just say for instance, levetiracetam, Kepra, and they'll say, "Oh, are there any side effects? What should I do?" And then the loudest people are always the ones who have the worst side effects, and then they'll say, "Well, beware because this might make you depressed, or this might do this to what?" It, and then it makes people scared to even start the drug so i think yeah like you're saying we have to be careful with not 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 be honest with patients but not frighten them with potential side effects right yeah, yeah. and you have to adapt your narrative to the personality of your patient and the family of your patient so you cannot tell the information the same way to everybody so for example if your patient is a uh, kind of obsessive compulsive uh, uh, the information has to be very very specific but not so i don't know uh, long because they are obsessive and then could cause real anxiety for them as well right and and then ironically the anxiety in many of us can cause seizures so yeah like you say you have to be so careful it's about it's about being honest complete honesty but just how you give the information has to be tailored yeah. right because of that this kind of prescriptions is better to make them when you know the, the patient so uh, don't don't uh, because of that is is uh, dangerous to have this kind of consultations where uh, every consultation you have a different doctor and that's quite common at least in the in the health system in Spain and you know that these kind of situations are less common when you when you see the same doctor always because you have this kind of uh, close relationship yeah so so this is one side one side is to know better the safety profile to to be careful about that and the other side is that, and of course, uh, every person with epilepsy has suffered this, is that we are putting medications in a try and error strategy. So you are, you are not precise, not only in the safety profile, but also in the effective, um, effectiveness profile. So sometimes you, can, you just know if it's uh, working or not after putting it. So you cannot know it before. So in this review, in this paper, we try to highlight the specific epilepsy syndromes or clinical scenarios or etiologies, so genetic causes and so on, where levetiracetam can be more effective or less effective. Uh, for example, we know, and we were talking about that in Philadelphia, in Denmark, in this weekend, that levetiracetam could be even harmful for some patients with uh, SCNHA gain of function uh, genetics. So, uh, for other genes, for example, PCDH19, it's another kind of genetic epilepsy, can be really effective, so the best drug. So, 
this is so important. We, we, we have to be very cautious and to try to study our, our patients better to understand, to better understand which uh, medications is going to be the best, not use levetid acid and, and see. Make sure that you do tune in next week to hear part two with Angel, where we shall be hearing all about whole exome sequencing, the potential negative impacts of levetiracetam leading to other illnesses and polypharmacy, plus the benefits of improving appointment quality between a neurologist and a person with epilepsy slash their family.